Tell me, what's cooler than being a badass on Big Brother? Nothing. Well, okay, winning $500,000 is probably pretty cool, but if you can't be the winner, being a badass is a pretty solid substitute to leaving a mark on the show. I can confidently say that badass moments are why the show is still on today. If there wasn't these jaw-dropping, drama-filled, season-defining moments, Big Brother very likely may have stopped airing after its first few years. So, I figured that it was about time we honored all of the badass moments in the show's history by compiling them all together and making a mega compilation out of them. If you enjoy watching videos where I show a lot of clips, then you're in luck because I'll try my best to show you every badass moment to the fullest extent in this video. This was no easy task though, so if you're feeling particularly generous today, consider subscribing as a way to say thank you, as it's free and it really, really helps me out. With that out of the way, go grab a snack, drink some water, and sit back and relax. These are the most badass moments in Big Brother history. You know why? This man is a badass. Starting with Big Brother 2, Dr. Will just absolutely puppeteering everyone to go on a fast just for fun and to see who would break early was funny as hell, but also just badass. Dr. Will also making a deal with Hardy and Nicole that he wouldn't nominate them if he won the Final Four HOH in return for being kept over Bunky at the Final Five, just for Will to then go on and throw the Final Four HOH to Monica was an awesome moment because he gets away with it and gets no blood on his hands. That's badass. Initiating the fast allowed me to be a puppeteer. I kind of look over the stage and I, and I play the marionettes and they follow uh, whatever I say. It's almost like mind control. So you gotta put up you and Monica and Nicole will send Monica home? Correct. I'm done. Hardy made a deal with me and he is too dumb to even realize what happened. As everyone knows, I uh, will make any deal I can to stay alive. So uh, I shook his hand and looked him right in the eye and said, you have a deal. I came into this house to gamble. I made a deal with Will to let him stay so that if he won head of household, that uh, he wouldn't nominate both uh, Nicole and myself. What does he do? He decides to throw it and take what's behind door number one. In Big Brother 3, Lisa voting to not bring back Eric, her showmance, because she knew it would put a big target on her back is actually so badass and one of my favorite subtle moments in Big Brother 3. Then, Jason looking Marcellus dead in the eyes and telling him that he should have used the veto before evicting him is so insanely badass. The contradiction between nice guy Jason and this cold-blooded move just made it that much more enticing and legendary. And lastly, I think Daniel Reyes' game as a whole deserves a spot because it was just a badass game. I didn't vote for Eric to come back. If you want Amy to return, raise your red paddle. If you want Eric to return, raise your black paddle. I'm trying to win $500,000. That's a big thing. <laughs> if Marcellus does not use the golden veto and he is still on the chopping block, I'm afraid Marcellus will leave Big Brother. As harsh and as terrible as it is, you should have used the veto. I'm sorry, but I vote to evict you, Marcellus. Let me just cut in here and make it official. Marcellus, you are now evicted from the Big Brother house. The only two people standing in our way is Lisa and Amy. Eight down, two more to go. For Big Brother 4, Allison seducing Nathan to use the veto on her to save her life in the game just for her to turn her back on him immediately afterwards and go back to flirting with Justin is the most badass display of ruthless gameplay that I have ever seen. Then, June looking over at Allison's tiebreaker final HOH answer, seeing that she put down zero, and then putting down one million herself to guarantee the loss so that Allison would win the final HOH, evict Robert, and then have Robert go and tank the jury in June's favor was so badass for June, guaranteeing her win and making Allison have all of the blood on her hands. He told me. You know, Dana, I think that uh, Allie deserves a second chance in this house, and I exercise to use my veto on Allie. He's a freaking puppet. Nathan can't make up his mind for to save his life. He's got Al He thinks Allison's going to save him in this game. He thinks Allison's going to take him places. I think Allie just totally brainwashed him. I, I don't think for a second that she'll hesitate to turn on him. Maybe the dumbest move he could have made was to save me. 
That's fine. I'm still here. I don't care. I need you to write a number down. I need answers from both of you. Answers, please. Okay. Ju? <laughs> In Big Brother 5, Marvin openly flirting with Diane in front of Cowboy was badass because he knew that Cowboy would run to his good buddy Drew and inform him of what happened, which would drive a wedge between the power couple of Drew and Diane, and it worked out exactly as Marvin planned. Deep in the game right now, and I gotta find a way to break up on Drew and Diane. So I had a strategy to try to break that up. If I could just place a little innocent kiss on her. So um, we kissed, this is just a little pick. Oh. And uh, hopefully it'll get a little bit of a trickle back to Drew. Marvin came up to Diane and just gave her a kiss. I think it was important to tell Drew. I think it takes a bigger friend to say hey. You know, don't get mad at my face. You and Diane were getting too close last night. I swore they kissed. For me, that kind of pissed me off. I just kind of wanted to see if Diane would actually tell me. So I kind of sat on that knowledge. Diane never told me. Big Brother 6 obviously has a ton of badass moments. Kaser dropping the bomb on Maggie that he knows not only that she has a partner, but who her partner is, and that he's evicting him and there's nothing she can do about it is super badass. Then, Maggie winning HOH immediately afterwards and sending Kaser home, disproving to Kaser that he missed when he claimed to have caught the bigger fish, was equally badass. Then, of course, there's James winning veto after veto to screw over the plans of many of the house. Then, there's Maggie mind-gaming the hell out of Howie, keeping her side safe and having Howie sent home someone on his own side. And then, there's Jennifer making a deal with Kaser after 11 hours right after he returned to the house that she would backdoor James if he gave her the HOH. Then she went back on her word and backdoored Kaser at the end of the week instead. And then finally, there is Janelle winning HOH immediately after that, nominating Jennifer and Maggie in badass fashion, and then sending Jennifer home to end this crazy wild streak of vengeance. It's quite possibly the most badass series of events to ever happen on the show, ever. Your name this early on. Are you not the target? You were the bait. So you sealed my mate. No. I sealed your partner's feet. I caught the bigger fish. Not everything's as it seems. I nominated James and Kaser. I've watched you rally people in order to go in one direction, and I find that to be an incredible threat. That is why you two are nominated. My group will understand completely. So, Jenny, I have your word? And we're backdooring James. We're all after James. I swear on your life? I swear on my life. Hey, Jenny. And I nominate... Casey. I broke my word. Duh. That's a part of the game. Janelle, congratulations for the first time. You are the head of household, HOH bedroom. Jennifer. Jennifer, please take a seat in one of the nomination chairs. Janelle, who is your second nominee? Maggie. Yes! Bye bye, bitches! So Big Brother 7 picks up right where Big Brother 6 left off. Literally. For starters, the Season 6 Alliance going 4 for 4 on HOH competitions to start the season off was a pretty badass display of physical acumen. During this reign of terror, you have Chicken George winning the veto in the most badass way possible by going on slop for the entire summer on top of a bunch of other punishments in order to win the veto and prove that he's an all-star. And then there's Dr. Will at that exact veto meeting proving my point by calling Chicken George a badass, which he then follows up by telling the entire house that he hates them all and wants to be evicted just to have zero votes casted against him after the fact. Way down the line, it was quite badass of Janelle to break free of the doctor's spell at the final four and evict Will, who would have guaranteed beaten anybody left at the end. And then finally, Boogie's turnaround jury answer to Danielle Reyes was one of the best and most badass answers to a jury question I've ever seen and certainly helped seal the victory for him. I'm going to give it everything I got to win the competition today. But once again, I feel like David fighting Goliath out here, but hey, sometimes you never know what can happen. 
How many consecutive days would you be willing to go on slop to win this veto call? I'll take them all. I'm back! I can't find an individual to hate because I hate you all. Don't use it. Pull me out. Back to you, George. Bring. Hello. Hey, Boogie. Yeah, what up, Dude, man? get this. You're not going to believe it. What? Big Brother All-Stars. I go in front of the entire house guest group, and I say, I hate you all. No one voted even against me. Everyone voted against Jace. <laughs> this summer, I've made a lot of mistakes in the house, and um, after tonight, I'm done making mistakes. I vote to evict you, Will. Sorry. <laughs> it's official, Will. You have been evicted from the Big Brother oh, All-Star house. God. Boogie, you looked me in my face and you said you were going to be my Jason. Jason would have never done what you did to me, so justify yourself. I'll make you a deal, Danielle. You give me your vote to win the money, and if I go home to my TiVo and I don't see more than one Jason, I'll give you half. I think Erica was your Jason. I think James was your Jason. I think I was your Jason. You were a very dangerous player that had to go, and um, I, I just will, won't apologize for it. For Big Brother 8, both Zach and Dick deserve the utmost badassery to be bestowed upon them for their performance in part one of the final HOH, which I believe to be the most brutal of all time. Especially for Zach, who endured eight hours of Dick tormenting him and being basically the only person all season to not crack under the pressure from Evil Dick, then going up to Evil Dick after beating him and calling him a warrior. It was respectfully badass. Then, at the final two questioning, I found it super badass that Dick was asked to give a reason as to why everyone in the jury deserved to be in the final two, to which Dick went on to basically say that almost all of them didn't deserve to be there, and that he still got their votes to win. Come on! Say something! You're... You got something to say, you always do. Do the teeth! Come on! Let's love it! Um, Dick, you have personally slandered every member of this jury at one time or another. So I'm going to ask you to do the opposite. Please tell me the reason that each jury member would deserve to be in the final two. Why does Dustin deserve to be here in the final two? I don't believe he does. Jen absolutely does not deserve to be in the final two. Why would Amber deserve to be in the final two? I don't know. There was no real strategic or huge moves in the game made by Amber. Jamika. We did give Jamika the opportunity to stay in this game longer than she was going to. And I think that Jamika appreciates what we did. In Big Brother 9, for me, I've got only one. At the final five, Natalie was on the block and basically pleaded to Adam and Ryan saying that she was loyal to them and only them and that they should keep her in the game because of it and go after Sheila next week. Unfortunately for her, Ryan wasn't going to stay loyal and the vote was tied one to one with Sheila being the one to break the tie where she then went on to say to Natalie, well, you just told me and everyone else where your allegiances are, so get out of here. It was cool and I loved the turnaround on Natalie, but what adds to this moment even more is that Adam and Ryan agreed ahead of time to split the vote vote to put the blood on Sheila's hands and that they wouldn't tell anyone who voted for who in order to remain neutral in the house. But immediately after Julie reveals to Ty, Adam tells Natalie that he voted to keep her right in front of Ryan, who just secretly voted to evict her, making him pissed in the moment and giving Adam favor for Natalie's jury vote. What a badass series of events that happened all within 60 seconds. And um, to my boys, I am sorry I have made some mistakes, but um, I love you, and you know my loyalty stands with you, so please, please keep me in the house so I can continue to play with you. Me and Adam agreed that we're going to make this a split vote, and Natalie nor Sharon needs to know who voted which way. This was to put the blood on Sheila's hands, and Natalie, you know, going to the jury house didn't need to know who voted where. The votes are in, and we have a tie. Well, um, Natalie, you just 
told all of America and everyone in this house where your loyalty lies. So I'm sorry, Natalie, I am evicting you. For Big Brother 10, it was so badass for Dan to throw the veto in week two while he was on the block because he was so confident that he was going to stay and that painting the picture of himself as a weak competitor was more important than guaranteed safety for the week, and he was right. Then, weeks later, after playing Ollie for a Fool all week long, Dan dropping the dagger and saying, Michelle, you better be careful for who makes bets on your life in this game, and then nominating her and sending her home was quite beautifully badass. Sorry, Dan, that was incorrect. You have been eliminated from the game. A lot of people think it would be insane to throw your only chance, but you know what? It's so insane that it just might work. Now, the thing about any time when you gamble, you're taking a risk. And in this house, someone's gambled with someone else's safety. And unfortunately, you better know who's making a bet for you. And in this case, Ali, you lost the bet. Michelle, go on the block. In Big Brother 12, Rachel winning the boxing ring HOH after being sent in round after round after round was super badass. Then Hayden's retort to Rachel during the fight in that aftermath was quite solid. And to top the season off, Reagan's absolutely decimating words to Rachel that just completely shut her down was incredibly mean, but a little bit badass at the same time. Rachel, the correct answer is HOH. Congratulations for the second time this season. You are the new head of household. Matt, give her that key. Flurries, you better grab a life vest. Kristen. Why? Because it's... you're so smart, Kristen. Yeah, I you have am. a fashion degree. Yeah. And you are because you have a chemistry degree. String a sentence together oh, without using man. the word like, will you? <laughs> Rachel, everything about you is a lie. Oh, your really? boobs are a lie, your face is a lie. The only thing honest about you is the pimples on your chin. <laughs> You're here for a limited time because your boyfriend did a Pandora's box and then leaves something horrible in the house. Wake up. Talking to you is like talking to the most vile devil child in the world. And I'm done with it, baby, because I'm done with you, because your game in this house is over. <laughs> Kristen! <laughs> Busted. Um, we were coming downstairs to show you, but you ruined it. I was like, hilarious! I'm just a little quickie for Big Brother 13, but Danielle and Kalia trading HOHs for three weeks was pretty sick for that pair. She's back in the game, folks. I am back in this game. You know, people were scared of me before. You better be scared of me now. Congratulations, Kalia. You're the new head of household. I know Danny was so nervous because her life was in other people's hands. And I got to show her that she's not the only strong person in our group. 1351. Oh my God, Danny, we are Wow. Congratulations, Danielle. You are the new head of household. I really wish I could have seen everybody's faces because I'm thinking there was like nooses being tied, guns coming out of shoes. In Big Brother 14, there's really nothing left to be said that hasn't been said on this channel a million times. Frank winning clutch comp after clutch comp to save his life in the game numerous times was sick as hell. And everything that Dan did in the game was badass. Constantly destroying Danielle's emotions through the funeral and sending Shane home at the final four and then swiftly reeling her back in time after time is just the pinnacle of badass Big Brother strategy. And the fact that he was able to convince not one, but two people to throw part one of the final HOH to him was impressively impressive. That didn't make sense. It was incredibly impressive. <laughs> My only chance here is to pull off a miracle and beat everybody all the way up from the bottom seat to the top seat. Too much pressure on me tonight, yo. Shot, Frank. Frank, congratulations. Frank, congratulations. Frank beats Danielle. Frank's taking out the quack pack like it's duck season. Come on, guys. You got to win something. Frank, congratulations. Somehow, some way, Frank has managed to knock out three quack packs 
and five total rounds of this competition. Now he's going head to head against the competition beast in Shane. He's my only hope. Frank, congratulations. You are the new head of household. Woo! I just can't help but look at the board and it says my name over and over again. Frank, 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 Frank. With the deck stacked against me, I bring home the W, and they're all at this point just being like, God, we can't get rid of this guy. I know there's Danielle. The last time I played this game, I learned a lot of tough lessons early on. We don't need to get into it now, but in this game, you'll never earn my trust back. You know what you did. And in this game, you're dead to me. So don't come to me and ask about it because it's over. Did I really go crazy in solitary confinement? Or did I come up with a master plan to get myself out of this mess? Just give me a forewarning next time. No, because I need one crack. Yeah. There's something big in this house. You're going to have one shot to break up. And this is that shot. So Shane, I'm sorry I have to evict you. Congrats. Um, Congrats. I feel so bad. Well, that's why I make a good team. Because I don't. I just won this first round of the final HOH because I convinced not one, but two people into dumping their chances of winning a half million dollars all for me. In Big Brother 15, it was so badass that Andy was able to bamboozle everyone during the Amanda eviction and then play it off so freaking well in the immediate aftermath that Alyssa was convinced that McCray, Amanda's showmance, was the one who evicted Amanda instead of Andy evicting her. That's just brilliant. In Big Brother 16, I'll keep it real with you, these ones are kinda lame, but nonetheless, badass in their own right. Caleb literally flexing during the first HOH was arguably a pretty funny way to show off his strength, so it was humorously badass. Then, once more, I don't love saying it, but after Frankie won the Battle of the Block by himself and was arguing with Zach and was accused of being a liar, taking that hit and saying, yeah, well, I'm a safe liar, was actually kind of a flaming response and likely would have been more badass if anyone else said it, but then, eh, what are you gonna do about it? I can feel my muscles just starting to give, and Caleb is hanging off the thing, like doing disco moves. Zach, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? You make fun of me to everyone. Zach, I make fun of you to... Okay. Liar! Well, guess what? I'm a safe liar. For starters in Big Brother 17, I'm just gonna say that Devon's words for Audrey in week two were both iconic and badass in their own rights. For some real badassery though, fast forward a few weeks to Vanessa not giving Austin the slightest of warnings before blindsiding him while he is barefoot. That was so badass and then instantly getting a showman's Liz to be back in her corner immediately afterwards was just the cherry on top. It's a game that she's playing. And at the end of the day, when, they, when her ass is gone, they still here. And I don't need them coming for me because some lies that she done planted. Your has hit the fan point blank and the period. You guys, this is brutal for me. I'm really sorry, but I came here to play a game and it's a game decision. I'm sorry, Austin, I vote to evict you. It's official. Austin. I'm sorry, Ben. You are evicted. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I gotta do it. From the big brother right house. Good luck, Austin. Now look, I'm not gonna sit here and say that everything Pauly did in Big Brother 18 was badass. Far from it, actually. However, Pauly's look at Jose as Jose realized he was about to be evicted was actually pretty badass and is a super fun rewatch. Also from the season, Victor coming back through the Battleback competition and evicting the HOH that sent him home twice 
Twice was super badass, and the way he went about it, especially in Polly's case, was handled with a sort of class and comeuppance that made the moments even more cool. Jose and Polly, by a vote of seven to four, Jose, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Look, that was voted out by everybody in this house, except him. If one of us does come down, is the plan to vote the other guy out? I don't know. If this is my strategy, don't get mad at my strategy. I'm not mad at your strategy. Did I do this to you when you put me up? I'm not mad at you. Okay, then don't do it to me. I trusted the group. Some plans don't work out. That one didn't work out for you. And I know that this one is kind of out of order, but I wanted to wait to finish up both prior seasons before bringing up James in the Endurance HOHs the week before Jury started in both of his seasons. In Big Brother 17, he promised Shelly that both her and Clay would be safe if she threw the comp to James, and then he went right back on his word and put them both up for eviction and evicted Clay. Then when he comes back for Big Brother 18, he does basically the exact same thing again with Bridget and Frank right before Jury again. It was actually awesome, and it was really bad asked that he did it again and shame on them for not learning their lesson from watching James the first time. I need your word. No nominations, no back door for me or Clay. Got it, James? I promise. No back door, no, back no nomination door. for me or Clay. You or Clay. Well done. I've nominated you, Clay, and you, Shelly. I'm not putting you on my own. Right behind you. Okay. I'm done. Do it. I have nominated you, Bridget, and you, Frank. For Big Brother 19, Jessica and Cody's ability to stay alive in the pre-jury through competition wins was pretty freaking cool, and the one that I think is the most badass was Cody's performance in the Scary Temptation competition. He didn't even flinch at the jump scares in front of him, and that's badass. Also, it's definitely overhyped, but for good reason. Paul managing to convince every house guest to throw a sprinting HOH competition to the girl with a broken leg is the most badass display of strategic manipulation that I've ever seen. Also, the jury voting for Josh to win was badass in so many different ways. Congratulations, Jessica! You are the new head of household! <laughs> I am more happy with Jessica's win than any of my wins. The girl's incredible. The fact that she got the HOH after I won the battle back, it's just a nail in the coffin to everyone that turned their backs on us in this game. I'm not afraid of the dark. I know I gotta win this competition and nothing's gonna rattle me. gonna work unless Kevin falls first because nobody really trusts Kevin so Kevin you gotta drop buddy because what you don't know is that there's a whole plan waiting to happen and it's all contingent on you throwing it so throw it Christmas is the new head of house congratulations Josh Big Brother 20 has a handful of badass moments. For starters, although slightly cringe, Scotty giving both Brett and Winston a shot at winning Vito in week three when he was HOH, then him beating them and telling them to their faces that they blew it was kind of badass. Brett completely mocking Caitlyn's visions during that veto ceremony was incredibly funny and badass in its own way. And then, come eviction night, knowing that he was going to stay, Brett coming up with the speech to pin the extra vote on Rockstar was brilliant, and then his straight face acting and attitude when Rockstar blew up on him immediately following Winston's eviction was one of the most badass displays of gameplay and trickstering that I've ever seen. And then, finally, Angela and Tyler's one step ahead, two steps ahead speech to Brett was pretty... <laughs> nah, I am just kidding. That was kind of lame and cringy, although I do commend them for giving it an honest effort in trying to make the moment more badass, because that's a lot more than what most contestants even try for nowadays. Ah! I just had a vision. You're supposed to take me off. Now is the time, Scotty. Take me off. Thank you. I gave both of you a chance to earn safety in the veto competition, and you failed. Not only that, but there's been a lot of sneaking and a lot of talking around the house, and you guys have been knocking on the devil's door a little too long, and now you have to answer to me. Before this, Rockstar came to me. She said, guess what? I'm going to flip on this vote. I'm going to make it a six to five. You 
are a bold faced, I, I disgusting, disgusting. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. I, I cannot. Then don't. And I call this move being just one step ahead. And I call this being two steps ahead. Brett, take a seat. In Big Brother 21, I think the entire stretch of Cliff being completely blindsided and evicted in 13th place, dominantly winning the battle back, and then beating Jack to win the HOH, and then nominating the two biggest threats in the entire house, all in a matter of like 24 hours, was a really badass stretch for the old guy, and it was so awesome to watch. Unfortunately, Cliff ended up backtracking and making a deal which ended up keeping both Jack and Jackson safe that week, but two weeks later, Jessica won HOH and didn't make the same mistake. She came out guns blazing, nominated both both big guys had an incredible speech, then topped it off by beating them both in the veto and sending Jack home. However, this did mean that Jackson stayed in the game, and I will give credit where credit is due. The last ditch effort to come up with the Tommy lie at the final five was actually so creative, and Jackson's execution of the lie in the blow up with Tommy was quite the badass performance. Six to four, Cliff, you are the final member of Camp Comeback. And congratulations to Cliff. You are officially back in the game. Congratulations to Cliff, you're the head of household. I've nominated you, Jack, and you, Mickey. Hell yes. I've guessed wrong every time. <laughs> that means Jessica is our new <laughs> head of household. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> Look who's got the key, baby. I went from banishment to being on the block twice to being HOH, and now I have the power! I have nominated you, Mickey, and you, Jack. I am ecstatic. One banished me, one had me on the block. Both of them have made me feel powerless, and I'm taking my power back. If it means that I'm taking away theirs, so be it. That's the name of the game. Hell yeah! Sorry, Mickey. Yeah. Congratulations, Jessica! Bling, bling! Oh, hello? Oh, Jack, it's for you. It's the jury house. What was that? They say they're waiting for you. At this point, the gloves are off and there's no holds barred. What I really need to do right now is pile as much evidence, true or not, on top of each other so that Cliff and Nicole's judgment will be clouded. I'm not playing both sides. You're, I'm you're picking not. a side right now. I picked a side. Because you got caught trying to play both sides. No, I didn't. Yes, you did! I didn't say any of that to you, Jackson. I just okay, didn't. you're right, you're right. I'm a magician and I'm a future teller. You're a genius. Own it. Own it. For Big Brother 22, Kaser's eviction speech was badass because he basically called everyone out for not playing how all-stars should. Then, of course, you have Davon winning her first competition ever with that tiny veto, where she then stands up to the Power Alliance after they pleaded for her not to use the veto by her choosing to then go and say, screw it, use the veto to save Kevin, ensuring safety for her alliance, and then forcing the power structure to lose a number, even though it only ended up being Ian. And then this one really, really pains me to say, but Nicole, the freaking worst liar in Big Brother history, was somehow able to manage to pin the flipped Ian vote on David for weeks by taking advantage of her relationship with Devon. And I found that to be a somewhat badass game move. It sucked to watch and seeing the aftermath and how everything went down felt very icky, but all feelings aside, it was pretty badass for Nicole to bluff so hard like that and have the outcome work out exactly as she hoped. I wish it didn't happen, though. Uh, now, when it comes to gameplay and strategy, I think you guys all suck. Aww. Here's why. Cody and Nicole have been running this house since day one, but no one's willing to take a shot. So here I am, sitting around on the block. So if you guys want to have a reunion, then keep things the same. If you want to play All-Stars, then keep me here. We'll continue to play. I hope I have your vote, Cody. Oh, you got it, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. You are not my ally, but you are my friend. I have decided, Kevin, I'm gonna use the veto on you. I hate lying. I hate pretending like I'm shocked. 
it's absolutely terrible. But you know what? I have to stick to it at this point. Otherwise, I'm in even more trouble. Oh my God. I'm just gonna ignore him. I'm not even gonna. I can't believe you did that. You swear. I swear I voted to keep the end. Jesus, Jesus. But don't hear this right now. No, that's the. I don't want to have one in this house. That's why I try to play this game the right way. She looked me dead in my face and said, I swear, I didn't do it, I swear. And then I get a goodbye message, and the goodbye message says, she flipped. Okay, yeah. And now, for the last U.S. season, Big Brother 23, we have Xavier just stepping up to Kylan after Kylan was evicted, and he brought up Xavier's nephew. It was pretty badass watching X step up and stand his ground, telling Kylan to basically keep his nephew's name out of his mouth, and then telling him to walk out to Julie. Yeah, I mean, I thought the whole you know, Kobe thing, raising him to be a man and face challenges and stuff. Are you talking about my nephew right now? I'm asking. I highly, suggest you, do, I highly suggest you stop talking about my nephew. I think that that's not really that's up to me. That Keep talking can, about my nephew, guys. If your nephew has good? nobody to look up to. Kylan. Kylan. Kylan, I, I, Kylan, I, I need you to leave right now, Kylan. Walk. Kylan, 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 I need you to leave right now. Thank you. Now, although we finished the mainline series, and although this video is probably getting pretty freaking long, I do have some spin-off series and Big Brother Canada moments I want to quick fire off because they deserve a mention. So, spoilers for those shows. Okay. In Celebrity Big Brother 2, after Ricky wins the final HOH, him telling Lolo that, hey, I offered you a deal, you didn't want it, but you should have taken it, I vote to evict you, was extremely badass. In Big Brother Canada 2, Ika shredding every other house guest letter from home for $5,000 and then talking trash about them the entire time was badass. In Big Brother Canada 3, Godfrey's veto speech to Zach was jaw-dropping to say the least, and the end result of him just barely staying at the end of the week combined with the pop-off that Godfrey had made that series events some of the most exciting and badass in Big Brother Canada history. In Big Brother Canada 4, Dallas telling Tim that he's not going to play his silly little HOH game and to put all the candies in for his name was a badass display of not giving a damn. In Big Brother Canada 5, Dimitri's taunting Netta at the double eviction, telling her that she was only safe for like an hour in the game before being evicted, was hilariously funny. And then, Dimitri's and Kevin laughing in the kitchen, basically saying that they've been trading HOHs back and forth for over a month, and ending with Dimitri saying, yeah, and now I'm HOH and I'm targeting you again, was another hilarious badass moment. And, oh yeah, literally everything Ica Wong in Big Brother Canada 5 was badass. Finally, in Big Brother Canada 9, after Jedson was on the block and won the veto, the fact that the entire house was able to formulate a plan to convince Jed to use the veto on Beth instead of himself and then succeed and then vote him out anyways was a badass moment that really made Big Brother Canada 9 stand out as one of the wildest and best seasons of all time. And it's been great working with you, Lolo. I offered you a deal so I didn't have to be in this position. So you didn't want it, so I evict Lolo. It's official. Lolo. Take the money. Take the money. Don't take the money. Don't take the money. Don't take the money. I'm looking at all their names and they all want me gone, with the exception of Adele. Rochelle, f you. I could care less who wanted to write you a freaking letter. You just got one, bitch. Sabrina, goodbye. You're an ass. But Kenny might have a heart. I just don't want this ass getting in your ears. What a woman. She's gonna do it. What a woman. She's gonna do it. She's not gonna do it. She's not gonna do it. No, she's not. Bitch! Get the f out of here! Zach, bro. You 
if you have any sense in your head at all, I strongly urge you not to use the veto on me. I want your blood on these hands. So don't use it on me. Use the veto on your boy, JP. Godfrey, you made your bed. It's time to sleep in it. You awoke a sleeping giant, man. You awoke with the sleeping giant. I will win at your age. I will send your ass packing, man. Who do you stand a better chance with? Me, the guy who sits, sleeps all day, does nothing else, eats chicken bones and shrimp tails, or the highly charismatic JP? By a vote of five, four. Godfrey, you are safe. Yeah, baby! Sam, I'm completely on to your schemes. I, I know your game plan. I'm basically not having any of it. If we're gonna play your game, then I'm gonna play the same thing. I want four gummy bears on myself. You can't nominate yourself, sorry. We can't make this one exception. The way it will work is five will go against you. Right. Yep, you can do that. Deal. Yep, done. Thanks, man. Runa, I'm sorry. No, you're not. You literally throw him I'm on the bus every two seconds. I'm not speaking, speaking to you. I'm not speaking to you. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Girl, Say bye. some more you're of your stuff. No, you're going home. Really ugly I promise you're going inside. home. I promise you. Really I promise you are going home. Everything. So get me out. It's fine. But just know that this girl does not have anybody's backs in this game except for Dimitri. You were safe for like an hour. Hi, Aika. Hi, Arissa. Please. Cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Netta. F out of here. Thank you. Bye. The last person to win an HOH that wasn't near you was Dylan yeah. on Buzzkill. 34. Day 34. Day 34 was the last time we've been in the HOH for a month, either you or me. From week seven, I put you up. Week eight, you put me up. The end of week eight, I put you up again. Week nine, you put me up again. Week 10, I'm gonna put you up again. The winner is... Jensen. I'll be here next week. Can we convince him to use the veto? On her? If we can convince him to use the veto to put up Brayden, but we flip on Jed. We have to use his ego to make him beat himself. Whoa. She wants him to use the veto on me. And then she'll put Brayden. Brayden up beside him. He's <laughs> guaranteeing that Jed stays. What? That's what he's saying. She wants you to use the veto on Beth. Yes. I've never actually acted in my life, but under pressure, I know how to get things done. I have decided to use the power of veto on Beth. Tell me the truth, and it stays between me and you. What do you want to know? Everything. I didn't come here to lose. I didn't come here to make friends. Did I? I'm telling Jed what he wants to hear, but it's not looking realistic to keep him in this game anymore. Now it's the end game, and this is just the right thing for my game to do. Hey, Tishan. Hey, Arissa. Please, cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Jed. Thank you. Thank you. It's official. Jetson, you have been evicted. Please get your things and say your goodbyes. And wow, there we go. That was a damn long video. Well, probably. I haven't edited it yet. But I'm exhausted after that. If I missed your favorite badass moment, you're just gonna have to live with it because I tried my absolute hardest to get as many badass moments as I could into this video. If you want to give back a bit for all of this hard work, consider subscribing to the channel. If you really want to help me out, consider joining as a YouTube member like how these lovely people have. You get some exclusive perks and it really, really helps me out. Side note, bonus points if somebody can count out the amount of times that I said badass in this video because it's probably like 4,500. Thank you for watching the video up until this point. I really appreciate it. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Easy, Kevin, easy. Here, hold these glasses. No, it's a joke. That may be it, man. That may be it, the heart. Man. Guys, you did a great job, by the way.